Gymnasium, the home of the Brockton Boxers. Tonight, the Brockton Box will be facing the New Bedford Whalers. In the words of the great Keith Jackson, oh, Nelly, we got ourselves a bond runner. I'm the Red Toe, bringing all the action. Guys, here's the deal. Big three action, Brockton Boxers, two victories in the playoffs. That's it. Let's not get cute here. Two wins, they're in the playoffs. So the Brockton Box need to take care of business. The Bedford's having a, a, a tough season. Coming in here at 1-16, and 16, the Brockton Box are 8-7. and seven. Ten victories to get into the MIAA, MIAA playoffs. So the Brockton Box are well on their way. They have uh, five remaining games after this. They'll be facing Sabus. Um, uh, two games over in Bridgewater for a, a, a weekend tournament. That'll be Sunday, Monday, and then they'll finish out the season at Sandwich. So the Brockton Boxers have five opportunities starting today to get two victories um, for the playoffs. But again, the Brockton Boxers and the championship spirit that we have, we want to get all, all the victories we can and, and, and finish out the season strong. Hope, hopefully everyone got out uh, their house okay as we just had probably the largest snowstorm in New England history, second to probably Blizzard of 78, which I don't remember. Coley from the baseline puts it in for two. Dominic Coley strikes for his blood, two to nothing, Brox's lead. Box's last game here was a victory against Bridgewater Raynham, winning very handily. So the Brockton Box are playing good basketball. New Bedford inbound the ball. Tatiana Diaz fighting for the basketball. It's stolen by the boxes. Here's Jordan controlling the offense. Jordan Diaz, top of the key. Jordan swings it. Looking for Coley. Diaz. From the elbow, swings it. Jordan, just inside the three-point line. No good. Rebound by the Whalers. Here comes New Bedford. Launches three. No good. In the inside, Coley again gets called for the traveling violation. Great inside position right there by Dominic Coley to shuffle the feet a little bit. More often than that, those are easy two points for the Brockton Boxers. Nice defense by Diaz and a traveling violation, probably because of Tatiana Diaz's outstanding defense. So 6.43, game just underway, boxer lead 2-0. to zero. Here's Diaz, swings it to Moore. Here's Jordan. Moore to the basket, floater, no good. Whalers at the board. Number 22 sets back for the jumper. Both teams frigid from the perimeter. Nice outlet pass by Coley to the basket. Nice pass. Chantel puts it in. Excuse me, Chanel Melton puts it in for two. Boxes lead four to zero. Motion, motion, motion. New Bedford gets their first two points of the game. Jordan. Coley with the board off the glass and in. Offensive rebounding machine right there. You know, I was talking to Dominique a few games ago. She told me she was going to get 50 points, 30 rebounds today. I don't know. That's what my sources are saying. Let's see if they're accurate. She's well on her way to her 50-30 prediction. And she also mentioned she was throwing... 10 blocks for a kicker. Six to two boxes up. 530 left in the first quarter. School actually canceled today, but MIAA is still playing this basketball game as they don't want to get too behind as one game was already canceled last week because of weather. As uh, New England just suffered it's just a titanic storm here. As Diaz loses the ball, recovers though. Swings it, Melton launches three, 
misses. Wales will get the ball. Actually, that might have been two. Her foot was on the line. Nevertheless, she misses the shot. Six to two boxes up by four. You know, putting in consideration there's no school today and the tough weather outside, pretty good crowd here for a Tuesday basketball game. In the inside, great pass right there. Oh, she blew it. Rebounded by Dominique. Here's more. So things down. Here's Melton. Swings it top of the key. Thought about the three things better. Swings it. Back out to Melton, gets a screen. Here's Diaz. Loses the ball out of bounds. Last touch on the boxes. And rolls a retreat possession. Again, boxes are 8 and 7. New Bedford 1 and 16. Boxes cannot win the big three. Durfee did win the big three last week. But nevertheless, boxing two victories to make the postseason. As Bill Parcells calls it the tournament. Nice shot in the inside by the Whalers. Six to four. Boxes up by a deuce. In the inside, more. Kicking off the glass. Offensive board. Puts it up. No good. Box is fighting for the board. Another opportunity. Here's Diaz to the basket. To Jordan. Off the glass and in. Penetration and dish right there. Outstanding. You make me want to show. Eight to four. Box is up by four with 3.30 left in the game. In the game. Check that. In the quarter. That was a very low scoring game, if that was the case. Dangerous cross court pass, boxes steal it. Diaz open. Puts it up, gets fouled here with the charity strike for two free throws. Dangerous pass right there by the Whalers. Good job by the Brock to boxes, clocking up those passing lanes. Nice outlet pass to Diaz. And they'll call that on the floor, so not in the active shooting, so they'll take out of bounds. Diaz takes the seat. Number 33. Christian McDuffie comes to the game along with number 35, Alana Burrito. Aliyah Burrito, excuse me. Jordan creating contact, no foul called. Here come the Whalers. Nice spot up jumper right there at the elbow. Moore swings it at the baseline. Jordan from the elbow, no good. Last touch on the boxers on Chanel Melton. She tried to fight for the offensive board. Wales will have the ball. 2.30 left in the first quarter. Boxes up eight to six. After this next whistle, Tatiana Diaz will come back into the game. Stolen by Melton. Here's Melton, coast to coast. Up and in. 10 to six. Let's go lot. Launches a three. Bullseye. Woo! Right between the eyes. They're gonna count that as a two as the foot was on the line. I thought that was a three. Foot was on the line. So 10 to 8. Melton. Oh, weaving right through traffic right there. 12 to 8 boxes up by 4 again. Coming up on a minute left in the first quarter. Nice defense play by Jordan. She needs help. Stifling defense. Timeout called. Timeout called by the Whalers. Staying strong here in the first quarter. It's always tough to, you know, have, after having a tough season to mentally come out every single game and, and play with a lot of effort. And the Memphis Whalers are definitely doing so, playing tough basketball. You know, as we um, to come along, you know, the second week of February, I know everyone talks about Valentine's Day. 
that's not really my favorite time of the year in February. My favorite time of the year in February, second week of February, is All-Star Weekend for the NBA. That's like my Christmas. So I'm very pumped about that. This Saturday, All-Star Weekend, two players of the Celtics selected. Only one will be playing, unfortunately, as Rondo's, of course, out for the season. But um, definitely a great basketball weekend if you're a ba if, if, if you're a real basketball purist which i am basketball purist and uh gotta tell you what this is one of uh not one of this is my favorite weekend of the year i mean christmas is cool and everything and you know thanksgiving but let's be honest here nba all-star weekend slam dunk competition three-point shootout nba all-star game and what could be best i play my whole schedule around this so 12 to 8, boxes up by 4, with 127 left in the first quarter. I'm New Barretto. Calling the game solo today. Great defense by Diaz. Will let to the basket. Kick it off the glass. Rebounded by Duffy. They're going to call jump ball. Possession now is towards the Whalers. So Whalers will cheap possession. Hey, one, one. Ball goes out of bounds. With 22 on the shot clock, Jordan comes to the game for the boxers. Chantel Jordan. Speaking of Jordan, Michael Jordan turning 50 years old on Sunday. Happy birthday, Michael. Triple out, triple out. Tries to go baseline. Nice defense by Diaz. Goes out of bounds. So now 10 seconds on the shot clock. 52 on the game clock for the first quarter. Substitution here for the Whalers. Number 12 and number four come to the game. Number four, 45, 45. Amber Martin, number 12. Bethany Lemieux. No relation to Mario Lemieux. Five seconds, five seconds. Three on the shot clock. They need to shut something up, and I don't think they know it. And they launch it. And they got away with it, uh, just barely missing the shot clock violation. Here come the boxes. Nelson misses it. Offensive board off the glass. Yes! Shot clock turned off. Wales have the last shot of the quarter. If they play it right. 14 to 6. Boxes up by 6. 14 to 8, excuse me. Boxes up by 6. Nice defense again by Jordan. Stolen by the boxes. Here's Melton. Gets the lucky roll. And that's the quarter right there. Box is ending on a 6-0 run to end the first quarter. So now it's time for the Nubia trivia question. Winner gets a pat on the back. Kevin Garnett last week recently passed a 25,000 point mark being the 16th all-time leading scorer in the NBA. The trivia question is this. Who is the number one all-time leading scorer in the NBA? And I'll give you a hint. Actually, no, I won't give you a hint. That's too obvious. So I'll give you the answer during halftime. So again, the question is, Kevin Garnett recently passed a 25,000 point marker becoming the number 16th all-time leading scorer in the NBA. The question is this, who is the all-time leading scorer in the NBA? Uh, I'll give you guys this one hint. He's a center. And that's it. That's, that, no more hints after this one. So 16 to 8, beginning of the second quarter, boxes up against the new Bedford Willis. Big three action. Here in Staff Gymnasium. 
Sloppy pass right there. It's Diaz, top of the key. Jordan launches. Yes. Oh, that was smooth right there. Pretty jump shot. Boxers with a double digit lead. 18 to 8. Goes out of bounds. Last touch by Diaz. One again, one again. Come on, run it right. Again, stifling defense by the Broxers. Stifling defense leads to a turnover. Possession outs towards the Wales. Check that they're gonna call a foul rather. Hey, 14, Nevertheless, New Bedford retrieves the ball. There's more to the basket. I tell you what, the Broughton boxes, they're up court pressure, leading to so many turnovers. 20 to eight, boxes now up by a dozen. Goes out of bounds. Last touch on the boxes. Wales didn't stop the bleeding right here. Very crucial point in the game. Do not want to uh, let the game get away. The Bedford known for so many outstanding basketball players. Um, most recently I can think of is Shelly DePina, outstanding basketball player for uh, New Bedford, moving on to Bridgewater State University, scoring a thousand points over there. Congratulations, Shelly DePina. Um, definitely, a, 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 this is a rebuilding year for the Whalers, but um, overall, a very good program. I know they, um, the team went 19 and one about two years ago. So um, New Bedford definitely has a program that's uh, here to stay. Just a rebuilding year. Just as the Brought the Boxes had one last year. So 20 to eight boxes up by a dozen with 618 left in the first half. right there. Coley can't make the jump shot. Gets the board. Yes! Dominic Coley, just great hands. Outstanding in the paint. You know what I like about her? She doesn't dribble. Takes the ball, goes right up with it. Another steal, another steal for the boxes. Coley again. No good. Melton, Melton to the basket off the glass and in. When it rains, it pours. Brought them boxes. Since the first quarter on a 14 to 0 run. And the Whaler uh, coach is really getting on the players and just saying, hey guys, keep your head up, keep fighting. You know, we can get right back into the game. 5.35 left in the first half. Box is just uh, really putting on a clinic right now. Again, a 14 to 0 run going back to the first quarter. So, well, we have a chance to want to give up the trivia question. I know I'm going to give up during halftime, but hey, I can't wait any longer. Um, the all-time leading scorer in the NBA is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> with 38,000 points. Center for the Milwaukee Bucks and Los Angeles Lakers. One of my favorite players. Another steal, here's Melton, coast to coast. Here we go, right down Main Street. Come 
At the elbow, swings it. Open jumper at the baseline, no good. Rebounded by the boxes. Here's Moore, looking to push the basketball. Moore to Jordan, launches, three, no good. Offensive board, last touch though, goes out of bounds on the boxes. Whalers will have possession. <laughs> Substitution here for the Brockton boxes. Aaliyah Burrito. Comes to the game for the boxes, number 35. Jumper from the elbow, no good. Rebounded by Melton. Melton, coast to coast. Foul, stay right here. And the boxes are not in a penalty. They'll be taken out of bounds, I believe, and they will. And I'm honored right now to be uh, sitting next to a, a legend. This is Savis is right here, which I hear was an outstanding athlete back in her heyday. And we'll confirm that during halftime. So 4.33 left in the half, boxes up by 18 points, two free throws. <laughs> Makes the first free throw. Again, school is actually canceled today, but MIAA is still playing the game of basketball because they just don't want to get behind with too many um, canceled games. Is they actually brought to actually had to cancel their game versus Catholic Memorial on Friday because of the of Hurricane Nemo. It was funny. This is the first blizzard box, box. I remember it to have a name. I know hurricanes typically have names. I never remember blizzards having names. So 27 to 8, Box is up by 19. Going to be a backcourt violation. No, saves it before a backcourt violation. To the basket, kicking off the glass, rebounded by Diaz. Looks to push the basketball. And a double dribble. Good call right there by the ref. Come out under four minutes left in the first half. Melton again with stifling defense. We're gonna call the foul on Moore. A blocking foul. Jordan comes to the game. Replacing Moore. Will is resetting the offense. So a little movement. They need, you know, they got to get something going towards the basket here. There's too much standing around. That's probably one of the reasons why they're struggling right now. As I say that, good play by the Whalers. Helps on defense and finally gets their first points of the quarter. Jordan misses the layup. Jump ball, possession now is towards the boxers. Melt to him on the ball. Nice pass right there. Melton in trouble. Kicks it back outside. Top of the key. Wide open three. Rims out. Last touch on the boxes. In the interior. 
goes out of bounds, though. Number 24 comes to the game for the boxers. Catherine Lewis. And this hands to Bedford's ball. Again, they brought the box of defense like a tsunami. And another push in the back by the Whalers. And they're still not in the penalty, so they'll take out of bounds. Substitution Amber Martin comes to the game for the Whalers, number 20. DJ Banks, a sophomore. Wide open shot, no good. Offensive board, yes. Plucked it from the Raptors. No motion. 29 and 10, boxes up by 19. Two minutes left, 2.30 left in the first half. Nice floater, can't get it in though. After this next whistle, Dominique Coley are going to the game. Nice play right there. That's what they need, more movement going to the basket. Find easy shots. Oh, what a pass. Coley, automatic from there. Automatic from there. Yeah, I like how Coley right now is talking to her teammates on defense. So important to talk during defense. One fifty left in the first half. Boxes with a commanding 31 to 12 lead. Coley from the elbow. No good. Offensive board, jumper, no good. McDuffie fighting for the board. Coley retrieves it. Down the baseline, wild shot. Coley just getting assaulted, no foul called. Was it a jump ball or a foul? It was a jump ball. Possession now is towards the boxes. Jordan just inside the three-point line. No good. One minute left in the first half. 31 to 12. Boxes up by 19. Nice interior defense by the boxers. Melton swings at Jordan. Baseline jumper. No good. Over the back on Lewis. <laughs> New Bedford and Brockton High. Such great rivalries over the past, I'd say, 10 years or so. Motion, motion, motion. Come on, high touch now. Let's go, high touch. Of course, now New Bedford definitely not where they want to be with their program right now, but. Uh, They'll, they'll be back next year. They'll be back. And she got away with the travel right there. And it's only right that she throws out of bounds. Shot clock turned off. Boxes will more likely have the last possession. Launches, no good. 
five, four, three, two, one, launches. Just off the mark. So that's your score right there at halftime. Your Brockton boxes with a commanding 31 to 12 lead. Just complete domination in the second quarter, allowing the Royals only score two points. We will see you in the second half. Every day, thousands of the Commonwealth's brave men and women are serving our country overseas, defending our way of life. And that's why it's so important. We support our returning veterans and their families. We are proud of the fact that Massachusetts leads the nation in the number of programs and services we provide to our veterans. Learn more about the benefits and services available to Massachusetts veterans and their families by visiting mass.gov veterans. And to all our veterans, thank you and welcome home. And welcome back to the second half. Brockton boxes up 31 to 12. I'm the Bretto bringing you all the action. Here's Diaz. Nice pass to Jordan. Gets fouled during the act of shooting. So she'll be at the line for two free throws. So New Bedford won in 16. Last home game for the Brock the Boxes. BR, I believe, had 14 losses. So past two home games, their opponents have had a, a total of 30 losses. So 32 to 12, and another unforced turnover for the Whalers. Unbelievable. More in on the ball. Jordan. It's Diaz. Excuse me, on the inside of Coley. Back out to Diaz. Launches a three. Boxes haven't hit a three this whole game, actually. I don't think it's really affect them much. They're up by 20, but interesting stat nevertheless. Diaz once again with the steal. Jordan puts it up, gets fouled. Outstanding defense play right here by the Brockton Boxes. Absolutely incredible. First free throw. Front rims it. So it's very important for the Brockton Boxes to be playing their best basketball heading towards the playoffs. You know, this, this is the fourth quarter of the season. This is a time where you have to really play in sharp basketball, sharp defense, trust your teammates, and the brought the boxes look very keen right now with the full steam moment, momentum going to the playoffs. Again, the brought the box need to win two more games to be qualified for the playoffs. As they're eight and seven, you need ten victories to make the postseason. Jump shots, no good. Here's more. Melton. So now Melton, no good off the glass. Last touch on the Whalers boxes will retreat possession. Diaz. Melton from the elbow, launches, Jordan for three, no good. Okay, if you guys missed the beginning of the broadcast, I want to wish a happy birthday to Michael Jordan as he'll be turning 50 years old on Sunday, February 17th. Why do I remember Michael Jordan's birthday and not some of my family members? I don't know. So he's got all my priorities in order. Six twenty-two left. Box is up by twenty-one points. 
New Bedford has only scored two points since the first quarter. Shot fighting for the ball in the interior. Box room on the ball with 12 in the shot clock. Once again, I'm New Brad Toe calling the game solo today. Hope everyone's recovered from the blizzard. I actually lost electricity for a few days. I gotta be honest with you guys, I actually wasn't prepared for this for this storm. I didn't I didn't take it seriously. And that's one thing I probably should have done. For some reason I always think meteorologists are always over exaggerating, but they were definitely right on target for this one. Nice pass right there. Count it, should have been a foul too. Launches for three, no good. It'll be way of the basketball. Diaz. Down the baseline. So foul on the offensive foul on the boxes. Coming up with five minutes left in the third quarter. Box is up by 23. Right from the beginning, brought the box really took control of this game. They've just allowed no wiggle room for the Whalers. They've left the Whalers in the ocean. No pun intended. I'll be here all week. What a pop. And right now, it's a showcase right now. They brought the box to put it on. They're putting on a showcase right now. Box is up by 25, 37 to 12. Moore swings it to Diaz. Melton launches. No good. Box have actually been cold for the perimeter, but they've done their, all their damage in the paint. And one thing about the Willows I've noticed, they're not talking on defense, nor on offense. Melton. Puts it in. Another steal by Melton. To Jordan. 
Loses out of bounds. Tough break right there. Brockton Boxer just been outstanding on the fast break. Nice outlet pass. Here come the box. Oh, what a bounce pass. This is fun basketball right here. Newbie credit left and right. Five newbie credit points. And another steal. Oh, bounce pass. I don't know what that was all about. Got a little too much out of herself right there. I tell you what, I'm not sure how many steals DS has got. As Jordan is still shaking up right now. And she'll be the line for two free throws. So injury right here on the Whalers. I believe it's number four, Amber. We'll find out, Trent and Jerry, what's the uh, story with the injury. So physical second half. Lisa Jordan at the charity strike. Watch out, Ray, watch out. And actually, you know, overall, this whole game, the Brockton boxes from the free throw line from the perimeter have been pretty cold. But they've been outstanding job forcing turnovers and attacking the ball in the paint. Second free throw is no good. 41 to 12. Complete domination by the boxes. Ball comes towards me. A lot of passionate fans here in the stadium, which I love. Another turnover by the Whalers. Jump ball, possession house, stay right here towards New Bedford. Oh, what a block. There's McDuffie. Outlet pass. Tatiana, what do you know? She's on fire right now. Motion, motion. Got to left in the third quarter. Boxes. Up by 31. If I'm doing math to see how, how much you're down by, that's not a good thing. Diaz, once again, attacking the basket. She can't be stopped right now. Offensive board, yes! Cool, calm, control, calculated confidence. Down the baseline, rejected, no soup for you! Offensive board. Follow on the boxers. That Soros will beat the line, a senior. 
Amari Soares at the line for two free throws. I wonder if she's related to my friend Natalie Soares on the Bedford. I'll have to figure that out. One seventeen left in the third quarter. Boxers is um, you know, unbelievable. Unbe I'm, I'm at a loss of words. Unbelievable. Just a, a dominant, dominant uh, third quarter. And those are the first two points for the Whalers in this quarter. Forty-five to fourteen. In the inside, what a pass! It's an offensive explosion. Hand checking right there. So 47 seconds left in the third quarter. Box is uh, really opening up this lead in the third quarter. Goes right towards us. Here we go. It's the second time I was getting attacked here on the sidelines. You know, it's funny. I was telling a story. I've always avoided doing the sideline camera during football season, but during the basketball season, it's why I get all the close calls. 30. 35 seconds left in the third quarter. And the Bedford on a full run. Here they come. Launches for three. New Bedford on a 7-0 run. McDuffie to the basket. Count it and a foul. Six seconds on the clock, 50 to 19. And that's your third quarter right there. New Bedford down by 31, and they have Brockton right where they want them <laughs> for the fourth quarter comeback. <laughs> I'll be here all week. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right where they want them. <laughs> well, I just want to remind all the uh, viewers out there, uh, premiering on film, Stepping Up. Excuse me, Step Up. I should know the name of my own film. Step Up over at Messiah Baptist Church. Uh, film on fatherhood. A lot of powerful, powerful stories. Film right here in Brockton. Uh, we're showing that Messiah Baptist Church this Sunday um, at 3.30. Uh, that's February 17th, Sunday, 3.30. Free show. Um, just come out and enjoy yourselves. It's going to be a good time. So uh, February, Sunday, 17th. Uh, I'm premiering my film on fatherhood called Step Up. And I would love if you guys can all join us. Jordan front rims it. Oh, great hustle right there by Diaz. Do be credit.
You know, she's in the running for the uh, player of the game over here. 738 left in the game. Outstanding rebound by Coley. Two hands, very fundamental. Diaz to the basket. Can't get off the glass. Offensive board. Coley fighting for it. Jordan recovers. Melton. Slowing things down. 50 on the shot clock. Diaz thought about the three. Goes to the basket. Passes it to Melton. Melton. Drop down, Cassie. Drop down. At the baseline. And they're going to say she stepped out of bounds. So a bit turnover on the boxes. Another steal by the boxes. Stolen right back. Anything you can do, I can do better. Goes up with a strong. And shoot at the line for two free throws. Good hustle right there. Number 23, Jocelyn Denard, senior for the Whalers. Next game we'll be covering for you will be boys basketball versus Catherine Memorial. Always a good time when CM comes to uh, brought in uh, some memorable games. I remember last year was an overtime thriller where Catherine Memorial came up on top. But definitely um, those are always exciting games. And we look forward to covering it. Well, I just want to plug our, um, as we know, brought to community access is three channels. 9, 12, and 98. It is Black History Month, so first and foremost, happy Black History Month to everybody. We are running a special Black History Month episode of One North Main, our flagship show, and it will feature associate principal of Brockton High School, Sharon Walder. So that will be channel 9, our public channel, 7 o'clock on Thursday as we um, profile four people actually in the community and Sharon Walter, associate principal of Broughton High School, will be featured. Sharon's one of four, including, um, we have Wayne McAllister on there as well, Marquise Taylor, and Gwen Knowles. So definitely a, a really a powerful, powerful show. That'll be on Thursday at seven o'clock. And that'll be channel nine, our public channel. What an outlet pass right there. What an outlet pass. You want to talk about deserving newbie credit right there. Great baseball pass. Looking up court, finally open man. Outstanding. You make me want to show. So 52-21 boxes up by 31 with six minutes left in the game. Well, too wide open. Doesn't take the shot. She has to take that shot right there. She's too old. Too wide open. There you go. There you go. There you are. There you are.
two free throws right here for the Whalers. Number 12, Bethany Lemieux. No relation to Mario Lemieux. Diaz, wide open, coast to coast. Cool, calm, collected, calculated confidence. You know, this whole game, the Bedford's done an awful job of getting back on transition defense. That's probably been the Achilles heels today. Box is up by 38, 59 to 21. Stone again. It's like a broken record right now. And what was that? I don't know if that was a layup or a shot or an alley hoop attempt. Boxers can't play sloppy now. They're up by a whole bunch, but you know, it's not about how many points they're up. It's about playing the right way of uh, playing the right way of basketball heading to the playoffs. You know, th their goal right now should be playing to get prepared for the playoffs. I mean, obviously this game's in hand, but the um, intensity and the focus still needs to go right through all four quarters. Duffy bounce pass. Run a two, Rod, run a two, Rod, run a two. Duffy now down the baseline, spinning. In trouble, gets called for the traveling violation. So our chance to thank our crew today, Aaron Tebow. <laughs> Aaron doing a fantastic job on camera. I just want to thank um, all of the, the crew, um, the cleanup crew here in um, Brockton High School, just doing a fantastic job getting this game ready for um, all the fans and, and ourselves. I mean, we walked in here. Everything's, you know, everything was clean, ready to go. Um, floors were salts and everything. So kudos to, um, to the staff here in Broth and I just doing a real kick butt job. They, they never get credit, but um, I want to give them credit now for, you know, great job that they do. Great job they do here, just helping us out. The custodial staff here, just, you know, making sure, um, you know, Little things that people don't know is make sure the bleachers are out where we can set up our camera, putting up the basketball hoops where we can have a clean shot at the main court. Um, they just do a fantastic job. Almost goes out of bounds. Hands up, guys. Hands up. Great cut to the basket. Out of bounds. Last touch on the Whalers, so boxers will get the ball. 
And boxers seem a little out of it right now. They didn't get back in focus. I mean, they're up by a whole bunch of points, but you know, they got to get back in focus and then that play is slop in the past few minutes. So both teams now in the penalty. <laughs> Number 30 gets a round of applause. For the boxers, she's not in the roster. the basket and the inside in the paint puts it up no good and another foul another two free throws Duffy with the offensive board, loses it. Out of bounds, boxes have the ball. One seventeen left in the game. There's all the reserves coming for the Brockton boxes, as well as the Whalers. So boxes will move on to be nine and seven. One more victory, and they'll be in the postseason. I think they will. Uh, I think they'll do. They got they got some tough matchups coming up, but um, I think the Brockton box will. will uh, I think we'll see him in the postseason. I'm fairly confident about that. I'll tell you what, high school playoff basketball is some, one of the best atmospheres you ever, you ever walk into. I mean, just outstanding how, you know, the fans and the super fans come out and just, just amazing. Fifteen seconds left. This will be the last possession of the game. Boxers is completely dominated. 
Yeah, I mean, no, 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 uh, no wither on that one. game right there 59 to 25 brought the boss to completely dominate uh, game ball goes to Tatiana Diaz fantastic game just a uh, complete domination by the brought the box one more victory you know during the postseason so brought the box is definitely rolling right now forever from BCA I'm new Brad toe God bless America Godspeed whatever that means take it easy guys